Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. I would like to kindly thank each and every one of you for joining us live from Masa University, Saujana Putra. I am Nadia Kamal from the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University, and I will be the moderator today. Today's webinar is hosted by the Faculty of Health Sciences, Masa University. The title of today's webinar is Ultrasound Guided Breast Biopsy. Dear viewers, before we proceed further, I would like to give you a brief overview of the programs offered by the Faculty of Health Sciences in Masa University. Before that, let me share my screen. Okay. The Faculty of Health Sciences has uh, one school and two departments, uh, which are the School of Physiotherapy, Department of Environmental Health, as well as our department, Department of Medical Imaging. So under the School of Physiotherapy, there are four programs, Diploma in Physiotherapy, Bachelor of Physiotherapy, Conventional and ODL mode, as well as the Master of Physiotherapy. Under the Department of Environmental Health, there are Diploma in Environmental Health, Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety, Bachelor of Environmental Health and Safety uh, via Open and Distant Learning Mode, and Diploma in Occupational Health and Occupational Safety and Health. Under our departments, we have three programs, which are Diploma in Medical Imaging, the Bachelor of Medical Imaging Honors, as well as Bachelor of Medical Imaging ODL mode. So if you're thinking why you should join the health sciences career, so the health sciences career actually offers high job demands, low risk of job redundancy, opportunity to work in variety of setting, a career that you can feel good about as you can also help people while working, and it offers lucrative, lucrative remuneration. So let's move on to our department, Department of Medical Imaging. I will bring you all through the departments and as well as the programs that we offer. So the field of medical imaging is actually stimulated by the advances uh, of the digital and communication technologies. That's why if we can see uh, the field of medical imaging is rapidly advancing parallel to the uh, communication technologies. So that's why we can see the uh, um, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, as well as artificial intelligence is embedded into our field to help in diagnosis of the diseases. Okay, if you can see here, these are the picture of our X-ray simulation lab, which is located at Masa University, Sarjana Putra campus. Upon pursuing the bachelor, so if you are thinking of uh, what are the area of specialization that you can uh, focus on after you have completed the bachelor, there are several areas that uh, you can uh, think about, which are the MRI application, ultrasound, PET, which stands for the positron emission tomography, uh, computer tomography application, interventional radiology, image analysis and processing, nuclear medicine, as well as in geography. So upon completing your bachelor's, you can always think of uh, specializing in one of the area. Uh, medical imaging and in Masa actually started so long ago. So our programs, uh, most of our programs are fully accredited by the Mal Malaysian Qualification Agency. So we actually, uh, we also have numerous reputable clinical posting venues that we send our students for the hands-on experience as well as the clinical experience. Uh, there, there, are, there is also facilities for the students to practice. Our labs is here. The lecturers is also experience as well as uh, it is, uh, the career actually have a very uh, high global demand. Instead, we, have, we also have our alumni who are working internationally in Qatar, in uh, UK as well. 
So why medical imaging? So uh, the medical imaging field actually uh, involve or embed two parts or two, two skill, which are the technology field as well as the soft skill where we deal with the patient. Apart from that, we provide services to the patient. There, is a, there are also opportunities to work abroad. Uh, you can always further on to become a highly skilled employee and further for specialization that I've already uh, mentioned just now. So Bachelor of Medical Imaging is a four-year program. For those entering with diploma, you can, uh, if you are eligible for credit transfer, you can shorten your, your uh, duration of study to three years. Uh, and these are the entry requirement for the bachelor program. So um, for those who are coming with uh, matriculation, uh, pre-university or STPM, we need the minimum CGPA of 2.33 in two of the following subjects, which are the biology, physics or math, and also chemistry. If you are coming with A level, so we need minimum grade D in two of the following subjects, which are the same like, like the matriculation. If you are coming uh, with diploma, uh, we need 2.75 CGPA. Or uh, if you have lesser than that, we need a minimum three years working experience. Uh, for the international students, we need a uh, TOEFL 550 or IELTS 5.5. And local student needs um, WET Band 3. So these are the program structure for the bachelor programs. Uh, it is a four-year program which also comprises of six clinical placement, which is uh, five weeks per clinical that will become 30, altogether 30 weeks of clinical placement. For the ODL programs, it is also a four-year program and if you're uh, entering with diploma, so you can always shorten the programs to a three years that will subject to approval of your transfer. Uh, the entry requirement for ODL is similar to the Bachelor of Medical Imaging just now. And these are uh, a little bit on the activities that we conduct here in Sajana Putra campus. Uh, this is during the open day where we have uh, visitors uh, and uh, students who comes and visit us. And these are also uh, during uh, the uh, orientation and also some of our graduates who were uh, attending the convocation in last convocation. Uh, this is the alumni of the previous year. So this uh, alumni has already worked. Uh, some of them as a radiographer, uh, one became uh, an application specialist and uh, there are a few of them who are waiting for license to work abroad. So this is the laboratories that we have as well as the IT lab. And these are the pictures of our student who went for the student mobility program in Chiang Mai University la last month in September. So our students went to Chiang Mai to have uh, two weeks of uh, student mobile mobility program. So as a radiographer, if you are wondering what does the radiographer do? So we actually help the radiologists in uh, determining the diseases, in uh, detection of the, the diseases. So we, we actually provide patient care and produce high quality images so that uh, that can uh, speed up or uh, help the radiologist to get an accurate diagnosis of the pathology. So the career pathway of a radiographer. So if you have completed the diploma program, you can uh, be a radiographer, you can choose whether you want to be a radiographer or uh, as well as the career as medical assist uh, executive. If you have completed bachelor, there are a few more uh, 
opportunities other than these two. So you can always uh, go to academic field to become clinical instructor. Or if you are thinking of being a sonographer, you can also go for a specialized course on son sonography to become a sonographer. After that, if you want to pursue to a high level through a master degree, so you can become an academician as well as a researcher. So after that, after the master, if you really are interested to become a researcher, to become an academician, you can always pursue your study to the PhD level. So these are our former students. Uh, Nur Kairanina is now working as a radiographer in Subang Jaya Medical Center. Another student, which is now uh, working in Qatar as a radiographer, she is also pursuing Bachelor of Medical Imaging with us. And this is the most recent student uh, who will be attending the convocation. Our next convocation in, will be held in November next month. So uh, Nor Elisha Adina, she is now working as product marketing specialist with Infinity Medical. So that's all for the brief introduction of our programs that we offer here in Masa University. Okay, all right. Please feel free to contact us through Masa website or our faculty Facebook page to know more about our programs. Or you can also simply leave a comment and we will get back to you. Your questions concerning this webinar session can be listed in the chat box for discussion during the Q&A session. Dear viewers, an e-certificate will be provided for this webinar. And to be eligible for the certificates, please, please fill in the survey form. And the link to the survey form will be provided at the end of the webinar. And it can be found in the comment section. Dear viewers, in a global effort to raise awareness on breast cancer, October has been designated as the Pink Month. The Pink Month is a month where efforts to educate those concerned about the disease, including early detection and signs and symptoms associated. Therefore, this webinar will provide an overview about the ultrasound-guided breast biopsy, which aims to increase the breast cancer awareness and the importance of early detection of breast cancer. Our speaker today will discuss about the ultrasound-guided breast biopsy procedure, which includes the clinical indications, material and equipment, technique, as well as what to do as the preparation before and after the procedure. Let me introduce to all of you our speaker for today, Madam Hanis Aisha Binti Ramli. Hi, Madam Harris. Madam Harris is our medical imaging lecturer. She holds a Master of Health Sciences, Medical Imaging, and Bachelor of Radiography and Diagnostic Imaging from International Islamic University, Malaysia. She has worked as radiographer for several years before joining the academic field in Masa University. Assalamualaikum. Hi. How are you? Waalaikumsalam. Hi, I'm fine. Good. Thank you. Uh, how are you, Miss Nadia? Great. You are looking pink. Yeah, we're looking pink in conjunction with the pink October month. Yes. Okay. So without further delay, let's uh, pass the screen to you and the screen is all yours. All right. Thank you again, our moderator, Miss Nadia. So I'll be sharing my screen uh, for the sharing session today all right so today i'll be sharing about ultrasound guided breast biopsy in conjunction with the pink october which is a breast cancer awareness month so my sharing today will include um, overview of breast cancer that includes uh, the symptoms risk and also ultrasound guided breast biopsy procedures where i will be sharing about the clinical indications contraindications, uh, what to do as a preparation, and then the equipment, materials used, so you know what to expect during uh, ultrasound-guided breast biopsy. And then I'll be sharing about the technique since we have different procedures, and then the advantages, uh, limitations, 
risk and also interpretations of results. So first of all, what is breast cancer? It is actually a disease in which cells in the breast grow out of control. It is abnormally uh, grow. Uh, so there are different types of breast cancer which depends on which cells in the breast turn into cancer and it can start at different parts uh, of the breast. So let's look at uh, different types of the breast cancer. For example, like ductal breast cancer, it starts in the uh, milk ducts. Uh, or mixed tumor breast cancer, it affects the milk duct and also the lobes. Okay, and then we also have inflammatory breast cancer, mucinous and also lobular breast cancer. So for example, we have invasive ductal carcinoma. So you can see in this image where we have a normal duct, with a normal cell, okay, in ductal carcinoma in situ, in this uh, image next to it, we have blue colored cells, which indicates the uh, which indicates uh, the abnormal cell growth, okay. So ductal carcinoma in situ means that uh, it is abnormal cells that appear identical to breast cancer, but still not have extended to outside of the first tissue location. So this cancer is classified as um, non-invasive since it have not yet spread to the surrounding tissues. So you look at the image next to it, we have invasive ductal carcinoma. So you can see that the blue colored cells already escaped out of the milk duct. So this is invasive cancer, means that it has spread out of the um, first location. So it spread to the surrounding issues. So this type is uh, is dangerous since it can spread to another part of the body. All right. So what are the breast cancer symptoms? A uh, woman may, may, may have different symptoms, but the symptoms include nipple changes. Where you can see the nipples become retracted or pulled in, inside or having a bloody discharge or having a lump in the breast where you can, you can feel there is like a palpable mass or you have a change in the breast color, or pitting of the breast skin means that um, there is like orange peel uh, appearance on the breast skin. And then you, you may also experience breast or nipple pain. So how common is breast cancer in Malaysia? World Health Organization recorded almost 50,000 new cancer cases in Malaysia last year. So the cancer incidence in Malaysia is also expected to double by 2040, which is a very high number. So there was an increase of 11% in new cancer cases and nearly 30% more death uh, uh, as reported by the Malaysia National Cancer Registry report in 2012 to 2016 as compared to the 2007 to 2011 report. So the number, uh, so the rising number of cancer cases will become major uh, health issues as the growing cancer burden continues to put tremendous physical, emotional, and also financial strain on people that have cancer, on the communities, as well as the country's healthcare system. So in Malaysia, uh, one in 20 women will develop breast cancer in their lifetime, which uh, the risk varies by the main ethnic groups. Uh, where we can see in this image, it is higher in Chinese and Indian as compared to Malays. However, studies show that Malay women tend to present themselves for medical attention at later stage, meaning a poor survival rate. So we have many stage of breast cancer. So Malay women uh, usually come uh, or seek medical advice uh, at late stages, which poor survival rate. So because we know early detection is one of the survival determinants from breast cancer, which depends on the disease awareness, which is breast cancer awareness and also regular screening. We have many different types of screening where we can do uh, on ourselves that is called as breast self-examination or uh, we can ask the clinicians to check if we are not sure if we found something um, we are suspicious about. You can go for clinical breast examination or uh, you can go for regular mammographic screening that is the gold standard to detect um, breast cancer and then um, usually 
average woman will wait about three months before seeking medical attention. This is because um, the symptoms that I show, not all symptoms will occur at one time. Sometimes you will feel a little bit pain uh, on your breast, but you're not sure. You feel like maybe the pain will go away after some time. So you wait and until it gets worse, then only you seek for medical attention. So that's why usually Malay, Malay women tend to present uh, or seek medical attention at later stages. So it is very, very important that you are aware of the disease and go for regular screening. Or if you are shy, you don't want to go for regular screening, you can check uh, your, uh, your own breast by doing the breast self-examination. All right, so we move on to the ultrasound guided breast biopsy. So what is breast biopsy actually? Breast biopsy is a simple procedure where we take out a sample of the breast tissue for further evaluation uh, uh, under microscope. So ultrasound guided breast biopsy is a minor procedure where we use a sound wave to help locate a lump or abnormality and remove the tissue sample for examination under microscope. And this ultrasound guided breast biopsy is usually less invasive than the surgical biopsy. It leaves little to no scar and also does not involve exposure to ionizing radiation since we use ultrasound. And it is a, a fast, a safe and also economical procedure. So, uh, for ultrasound guided breast biopsy, it is clinically indicated for patients that have palpable breast lesions, okay, uh, or for patients that develop symptoms of breast cancer, like I mentioned, having a breast lump, uh, having breast dimpling, orange peel appearance, skin thickening around the breast area, retracted nipple, which is not uh, commonly or uh, is which is uncommon for the woman before, and then if the woman uh, uh, experience change in shape, size, or weight of a breast. And then also indicated for patients that have abnormalities uh, that found on imaging tests. For example, presence of microcalcification, which is a small calcium deposit or a spindle-shaped mass on mammogram. Okay, or uh, if you uh, perform ultrasound and there is a solid or partly solid lump found, okay, uh, it is also indicated to undergo the breast biopsy. And then presence of a mass with irregular borders found on breast magnetic resonance imaging. Okay, contraindications. So uh, breast ultrasound, breast, uh, ultrasound guided breast biopsy is con uh, contraindicated for certain women, for example, like breastfeeding women, because there is a risk of a milk fistula. Fistula is, uh, is an abnormal collection of film between the skin surface and the milk duct in the breast. And then women that have silicone breast is not advisable for core needle biopsies since the needle can puncture the silicone. And then presence of a skin infection, a bleeding disorder or patient uh, that is on anticoagulant therapy. And if the lesion is too deep and not palpable, it is contraindicated for um, fine needle aspiration. So how to prepare for ultrasound guided breast biopsy? Usually the doctors will take your history first, your family history, your medical history, your allergy history, okay? And then you'll be advised to wear a comfortable and loose fitting clothing. And then to remove all clothing and jewelry in the area to be examined, especially in the upper part of your body. And then you'll be asked to change into a hospital gown and ask to quit smoking before the biopsy procedure to reduce risk of infection and also to improve uh, wound healing. Uh, for diet, means like the, uh, you can eat or drink. Um, there is no restriction on uh, food. Okay, then equipments and material use for ultrasound guided breast biopsy. Of course, we use ultrasound machines that includes a computer console, a body mon video monitor, and an attached transducer that you can see in this uh, uh, image, okay, ultrasound gel. And then we use alcohol swabs for vidon iodine solution that is the disinfectant. And then we use a sterile gloves, a sterile syringe, collection tubes, grapes to cover the patient. And then a plastic bandage uh, with a soft gauze as a dressing. And uh, we may need a 1% lidocaine. Lidocaine is a local anesthetic. 
Okay, for fine needle aspiration, usually we use 21 or 25 gauge needle with a semi-opaque needle hub and also 3 mil or 5 mil syringe. It is a very thin needle. For core needle biopsy, we use a slight larger needle where it is an automatic spring-loaded needle that consists of an inner needle connected to a true or shallow receptacle that is covered by a sheet and then attached to a spring-loaded mechanism. For open biopsy, it is a surgery where we use a syringe, forceps, couples, and a specimen cup or microscope slide. So we have different types of press biopsy. This is the most common one, which is fine needle aspiration. FNA involves insertion of a very thin needle through the skin to collect a sample of cells. Usually this is not painful since we use a very, very thin needle. And then we have core needle biopsy which we use a slightly larger sample of tissue, uh, which we use slightly larger uh, needle to collect a more sample as compared to FNA. And then uh, in open or surgical biopsy, uh, we use, uh, we perform a surgical procedure that involves cutting into the skin and also breast tissue. So first we look at the fine needle aspiration first. It is a procedure where we use to obtain a sample of cells from breast lump using a thin, small needle. So the results from FNA will help to determine whether um, the lump is a cyst or an infection or a benign tumor that is not dangerous or a cancer, malignant uh, tumor. So FNA is chosen if the lump is likely a fluid-filled cyst because it is helpful to distinguish cyst from a solid masses. And if the lump is a cyst, which is contained, uh, contained of a harmless fluid filled sac, the fluid will be drained out at the same time to relieve any pressure that the lump may cause. So the technique, first, a uh, patient will be uh, lying on the bed. Okay, uh, The skin will be prepared with alcohol, chlorhexidine or betadine as a disinfectant. And then will be numbed with local anesthetic if needed. Okay, but usually it is not painful, so you know you don't need the local anesthetic. And doctor will locate uh, the mass by palpating your breast or by using ultrasound guidance. So once found, uh, the mass will be uh, the mass will be punctured repeatedly with slightly different needle trajectories. Why? Because we want to collect sample from different territories, so we want to include as much as uh, samples we can. So if the lesion is cystic, liquid will be aspirated fully and we will send uh, the liquid for, to the lab for further investigation. And the area around the puncture site will be checked for bleeding or any blood clot, uh, clot evidence. Okay, this is how FNA looks like. Um, Usually, like in this image, uh, we have ultrasound as a guide, and then we have the biopsy needle, FNA needle, and then this is the area to be biopsied. They will puncture the mass or the lesion and check out the fluid, okay, using the syringe, right? So this is like summary for FNA. First, it locates the lump by palpation or by using ultrasound, and then a fine gauge needle used to extract the fluid and then sent to the lab for pathologists to analyze the fluid uh, sample. All right, so the advantages of FNA is that it is very fast, simple, and less invasive than surgical biopsy. And it leaves little to no scar because we use a very small thin needle and it does not involve ionizing radiation since we use ultrasound machine. So the limitation, uh, it could give increased risk to the false positive and false negative uh, results. Why? Because only sam a small sample uh, of tissue is collected. So it is usually not possible to determine whether uh, the tumor uh, is benign or cancerous. And if it is cancerous, we cannot determine the tumor breed and size. And if the results from FNA or core biopsy are not clear, usually they will suggest for open biopsy. So the risk for FNA includes bruising, hematoma, okay, bleeding, uh, pain, which is a uh, slight pain, but it can be covered by using medication later. And then a uh, small risk of infection or pneumothorax if the needle is advanced deep in the chest area. 
just a slight risk. This is a very rare case where uh, the needle will pass through the chest wall that could allow air around the lung and cause uh, the, the lungs to collapse. But the, the pneumothorax uh, risk is uh, extremely rare. So we move on to the core needle biopsy. We, it is uh, similar to FNE, except that we use a larger needle and the pathology report is different. So the larger size of the sample will allow the pathologist to look at the way group of cells are organized instead of looking at individual cells. This is um, because um, cancer cells are dividing in abnormal fashion, so they make the tissue around them this, uh, to appear disorganized. So uh, by examining collections of cells or tissues instead of individual cells, the pathologist will get a good sense for the health of organ from which the sample was removed. So at least three samples, usually more, samples are taken from each breast mass to ensure an adequate sample. So the technique, skin will be prepared and disinfect uh, with, with uh, disinfectant and then numbed uh, with local anesthetic. Usually we need a local anesthetic since the needle is larger compared to FNA. And then doctor will locate uh, the mass using ultrasound guidance and insert the needle and advance directly into the mass. And then we have automated mechanism of core needle activated to move the needle forward and fill the needle through or fill the shallow receptacle with cords of the breast tissue. And then the outer sheath of the needle will instantly move forward to cut the tissue and keep it in the tube. So this process will actually be repeated uh, three to six times to collect the tissue sample. So this is how it looks like. So we have uh, automated uh, core biopsy uh, needle. Okay. So we perform a small skin incision. We have the tumor or the lesions lung. Okay. And then we take out the core specimen from the tumor and send to lab for analysis. So this is actually how it looks like. The relative is placed within the lesion and then we advance into the lesion via an automatic spring loaded device and then it will cut a core of tissue via an automatic spring loaded device and the complete core of tumor tissue will be obtained and we will extract out the sample. So the advantages of a CNB is that it is less invasive than surgical biopsy and leaves little to no scar as well, it does not involve ionizing radiation and it can be used for additional study and has more specific diagnostic abilities than FNA. Why? Because we extract more uh, sample of tissues. So the limitation of CNB is that it is more expensive, time consuming and more invasive than FNA and the interpretation of results will take more time as compared to FNA and if results is not clear, open biopsy will be recommended. Risk is same like bruising, hematoma, pain, infection and pneumothorax. So this is a comparison of uh, FNA and CNB. So pathology type is cyto, uh, cytopathology for FNA where we look uh, for cellular abnormalities. For core needle biopsy, we look at the histopathology which is a study of abnormal uh, tissues. So interpretation time means the results can be, uh, for FNA, we can get it immediately. For core needle biopsy, uh, we need more time to interpret the results. And then uh, for diagnostic ability, FNA have limited ability to specifically diagnose benign lesion because it cannot uh, differentiate between in situ and invasive breast cancer. So remember in situ is uh, cancer or uh, tissues that is not yet uh, spread out to surrounding area. Invasive, uh, the one that already spread out. So core needle biopsy have the strong ability to specifically diagnose diagnose uh, benign lesions and have some ability to differentiate between in situ and invasive breast cancer. So FNA cannot be used for additional study because only small sample is taken. But um, core needle, it is more invasive, time consuming and expensive as compared to FNA. And then uh, advantages of FNA is that it is inexpensive, quick, readily available and very safe. Uh, since we use small needle and only um, uh, ultrasound machine. And for core needle biopsy, 
It can be used for additional studies and has more specific diagnostic abilities as compared to FNE. So effectiveness of core needle biopsy have a 100% positive predictive value and sensitivity and specificity higher as compared to FNA. So what is the importance of sensitivity and specificity? It, um, uh, remember I, I told you about the risk of false positive or false negative results. So specificity and sensitivity will determine uh, that the test is accurate. Uh, so higher number, higher percentage means that it will not produce false positive or false negative results. Next, we go to open surgical biopsy, which is a procedure in which a sample of breast tissue is obtained surgically, so it can be tested for breast cancer. So it involves a cutting into the skin and also breast tissue. And we have two general types of uh, breast biopsy, uh, open biopsy, where we have incisional biopsy that removes only part of the abnormality. And for excisional biopsy, it removes all of the abnormality as well as a margin of a normal tissue. So technique, um, actually open surgical biopsy is not ultrasound guided breast biopsy. But before we want to perform uh, open or surgical breast biopsy, we must uh, perform wire and ultrasound guided localization technique where we place a guide wire under, uh, under ultrasound guidance into the suspicious area to help the surgeon locate the lesion for surgical biopsy. So this uh, wire and ultrasound guided localization usually done in the radiology suite and the wire will fix in a way to avoid migration or displacement during transferring patient from radiology suite to the operating suite. So once we perform the uh, wire and ultrasound guided localization, we can send our patient to operation suite. So this is how the wire localization technique is done. So when uh, we use an ultrasound to locate uh, the suspected tissue, and then we puncture a needle through the skin, okay, going to the suspected tissue, and then wire will be inserted to the needle, okay, and then you will be uh, the needle will be pulled out and leave. The wire inside so uh, if like this it is ready for surgery okay it's like, it's like a marker to help the surgeon locate where is the suspected tissue so in the operating suite okay this is the open uh, surgical biopsy technique so in the operating suite a uh, patient will be asked to lie on the back and then breast skin will be cleansed with disinfectant and the procedure may be done with a general anesthetic and patient will be asleep throughout the procedure. Uh, and sometimes uh, the team will uh, sedate uh, the patient and use local anesthetic instead of the general anesthetic. So then the surgeon will make an incision and remove the tissue. So the goal of open biopsy is to remove the tumor and to get clear margins of healthy surrounding tissue with Sample. And if needed, uh, the incision will, close, will be closed with sutures and surgical dressings are applied to keep the surgical site clean uh, and dry. So this is an example of how in, uh, incision and excision open biopsy is done. So only small part of the tumor is taken out while in the excision, we check out whole or all part of the tumor out including the uh, margins of a healthy tissues. So the advantages of open biopsy is that it has smaller risk of misdiagnosis and it is more accurate than FNA and CNB, but it is more time consuming and invasive as compared to FNA and CNB. And it also involves higher risk of complication like bleeding or infections as compared to FNA and CNB. And uh, since uh, it is an open surgery, it will leave like scars. So risk uh, for open biopsy is like bleeding, uh, infection, bruising, scar, uh, tissue damage, breast deformity. If the uh, mass or lesion is large, okay, when you take out a sample, you take out the whole of the mass, it can uh, create like breast deform in, in terms of uh, the shape. Okay, and then you might feel numbness over the area uh, for uh, quite some time. 
as compared to the FNA and CNB since they use like GA, general anesthesia or local anesthesia. So for results, interpretation results, biopsy are defined as negative, positive or inconclusive. If they are inconclusive, uh, another biopsy or other studies may be needed. So findings may be listed on the report as normal. Okay, so means it is normal. You, have, you don't have like cancer or benign, which is a non-cancerous breast condition. Okay, benign breast condition that have high risk of uh, developing into cancer or carcinoma in situ, which is cancer that is not yet spread to another uh, area. And then cancer, cancer or malignant cancer, which is already uh, in the other part of the body. And a part of that, um, like FNA, it draws out fluid. So from the color of the fluid drawn out uh, during the procedure, it can give like some clues about the nature. If the fluid is like in a brown, green or tan in color, and uh, if the lump shrinks, as a result of the aspiration, it is most likely a cyst, which contains a, which is a fluid-filled sac, which is harmless. And then sometimes, uh, if the uh, fluid is clear or contains like blood, in rare cases, this will mean that the lump is cancerous. Or if uh, the needle throws out a bit of tissues, okay, and a very little fluid, it could indicate that it is a solid mass. All right, so to summarize, ultrasound guided breast biopsy are excellent techniques to obtain diagnostic tissue samples, and it is relatively safe, low cost, uh, minimally invasive, frequently necessary for obtaining a definitive diagnosis and making appropriate diagnostic and treatment plan. And what complications are possible? Usually, they are minimal, especially when the procedure is performed by a highly trained and experienced sonographer but uh, this is applicable to fine needle aspiration and core needle biopsy the open surgical biopsy is um, another story it is not ultrasound guided breast biopsy so uh, that is uh, my sharing for today thank you very much for your uh, attention uh, during my sharing today so I will stop sharing uh, my screen. Okay, thank you, Madam Hanis, for the insightful presentation. Dear viewers, if you have any question for our speaker, you can feel free to leave the comment on the chat box. So let's move on to the first question. Do we have any question? Okay, one question from Umi Maisa, Mrs. Hanis. What is the next step after a positive breast biopsy? All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Umi Maisa. So if um, your breast biopsy is a positive for cancer, you may need additional testing to define the type and aggressiveness of the cancer. And the treatments may include like surgery, uh, radiation, chemotherapy, or having like other medications, those will, will be discussed um, by your doctors on what to do after a positive breast biopsy. They have uh, many alternatives and it depends on the patient itself. Okay. All right. I hope that answers uh, Umi Maisa's doubt. Okay. Another question. I believe we have a few questions for. You. Hmm? Okay. It seems the ah, okay. All right. Uh, a question from Ayrifadin Osman. Madam Hamis, is it possible that the sample to be taken at few sites in one procedure? All right, is it possible the sample to be taken at a few sites in one person? The answer is yes. We, uh, it is possible to be taken at a few sites. So we will take different samples to determine whether it is cancerous or not. Sometimes like if an FNA, we will do like repeatedly 
to include all of the samples inside. Since we only take a small sample, so we need to know if they have like septa or vegetation, which means they have different, um, like in one cis, sometimes they have like separation. So we want to take more samples, so it is possible. Okay, all right. So another question uh, from Raja Fatiha. And the question disappear. <laughs> okay, from Raja Fatiha. Miss Hanis, I have one question. Regarding the tumor, can we identify whether it is benign without biopsy? So, can we tell uh, if it is benign without the biopsy? So, the answer is no. The only way to determine for certain if a tumor is cancerous or not is with biopsy where a pathologist will examine the sample to determine if the cells are benign or malignant. okay i think that's all the question that we have today so dear viewers as mentioned in the beginning of the webinar an e-certificate will be provided and to be eligible for the certificate you need to fill in the survey form that can be found in the link provided in the comment section with that we conclude today's session to our dear speaker thank you very much for thank joining you. us and especially thank you uh, for sharing uh, the knowledge on the breast biopsy to our keen and attentive viewers, thank you for joining our webinar. We look forward to your comments and participation in our future events hosted by Masa University. For further queries, please contact us through the Masa website or visit our social media accounts. Till then, have a pleasant day. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Bye-bye.